So at this time, uh, board member Jody Story will lead us in the play. A play that will be to send me the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I am assuming we have no one here for public public Uh Yes, sir. You're not on the agenda, so we'll have you under the public comment section. During this section, uh, we can't comment on anything you say. Right, but uh, we're listening. Nothing fancy. Just want to uh, quarterly invite you all. Try to do this every year. Uh, kids enjoy seeing familiar faces. I do have a couple of letters here. I've been giving them out to some buyers and some businesses and stuff. Kind of highlights what the fair actually is and what our kids do over there. Uh, but anyways, I got some, you got your little pamphlet in front of you. Um, fair starts on Wednesday. Um, we've got kids showing rabbits, goats, heifer, steer, swine, rabbits, a little bit of everything. What time would that be, the 3.30? Uh, okay, so they show daily. Okay. Uh, so if you look right there, you'll see showmanship. Okay. And you'll see placing, etc. Uh, but on Friday is the big day for a lot of these kids. Uh, they'll take and sell their animals. Uh huh. Uh, so um, not that we need you to throw your hand in the air and buy some things, but I know it's also always appreciated. Uh, but uh, usually um, uh, businesses will stop by and. Um, They'll run a bit up. I know uh, Jeff Wade, Mr. Wade, he's helped out some kids. We've got some uh, stones. We've got um, uh, McDonald's. People around here will go over there. And of course, a lot of our kids go into Capital County to buy stuff. So uh, businesses, you know, the Johnson Brothers down there used to be uh, Food Line or Food Pair or whatever it is now. Um, save a lot. They, you know, they buy some stuff. So, anywho, um, more or less, we've got kids participating, and uh, it's a financial game for these kids, but really, uh, they'll take it. I mean, they, they call it, they're called projects in the 4 H world. Um, they're more of an entrepreneurship thing for me. Uh, they take and um, they, they have this animal, they raise it from a baby to more or less processing weight, um, and then they'll turn right around and the buyer will do whatever they want to with that animal at the time being. But kids get to learn how the um, uh, more or less just how the world goes around, you know, uh, how to get a little bit of money invested before you can reap the reward and, uh, you know, to make a nice looking animal, you're going to feed it. Uh, that's just one of the essays that a lot of our kids have. Uh, but nevertheless, I'll get, I was running late, so I'll make some copies and give you all this fire letter um, before y'all leave, y'all hang out. But uh, so that way y'all can, if you know some businesses, send them our way. So. Nothing fancy. Just want to cordially invite y'all to the fair. It's next week. Uh, we'll be over there. I'll, I'll be over there all week. But uh, kids start rolling in uh, Tuesday night with their animals, and then Wednesday we're like it starts at three, three to eleven daily, and then on Saturday we're open all day long. Uh, if, if the animals doesn't tickle your fancy as much, we also have uh, some wheel events going on. They got the derby and. Uh, they got a rodeo on Friday and uh, got a few other things. They got a little midget wrestling. <laughs> That's supposed to be fun. I'm trying to I love midgets, but uh, it'd be kind of funny to watch that. So uh, there's some events for you and your family if you want to bring them around. But uh, <laughs> little people, little <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> so, any, I don't want to take any more of your time. Just wanted to get y'all. Thank y'all. That's uh, Thank you for coming. Yes, talking tonight. But I got a question. Okay, go ahead. What's the status of the chicken house that we approved? Chicken house got approved about last month. According, I've, I've not been physically told. I looked on the agenda at that special meeting, and I guess it got approved. Um, Louis Pridemore was over there last week, and he was leveling out some ground. Um, and I'm gonna talk to Jerry okay. and um, run some ideas by him, and. Uh, more or less trying to line everything up. Honestly, um, I talked to Shane before school went uh, messing or which is the carpet. Oh, the principal keep first. Right, right. Well, Steve proved it. She said everything is golden. Um, 
more or less, I just want to, I just want to make sure all my I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Okay. I don't uh, want to know. But we're getting balls rolling. I do have Thank a question, you. Seth. Yes, sir. Uh, has nothing to do with anything. Go like ahead. That. Is there an operational brush hog? There? there is. Well, it was until I have to double check, but uh, the last guy that was over there broke in there. So I got to make sure he put that shear pin back in. But okay. there is. Can, a, can you let me know? Yeah. Which there's something. All right. All right, because we may need to take up the road a little bit. Up the dip off. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Well, three, 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 three. I agree. I'll need a bend to uh, approve the minutes of June 30 and uh, in July 11th meeting. So I have a motion. I'll make that motion. Third, second. Wilson. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? None. Brings us to the administrative portion. Uh, Roman numeral four has uh, ABC six items on the administrative section. Is there any discussion on any of these items? Well, I have a couple of things here. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I asked Mr. Barnett about the social workers, and uh, this is coming from a grant that Mr. Gaines had got funded by the same source that we approved a couple of weeks ago for the five social workers, I think, we had at that time. And uh, so this is two more funded out of that same uh, source funding. So, so that's from Mr. Seven. Uh, I, I just want to throw out there my concern that we don't want to get too many um, social workers. We want one, at least one in every school, possibly one or two in the high school. Uh, I've got some notes here if you'd like, but it's Steve sent me. He can't get out. Uh, they have some uh, power lines down. Go there where he is. He sent me a bunch of notes if you'd like me to go. Uh, I don't particularly need that if you're satisfied with it. Uh, or satisfied with it, that's that's fine. Do we think seven would, would be a good number to have? How well, like, yeah, many we have now? My, my concern is that we don't get saturated, yeah, uh, with too many in one location. Well, that'd be one for each school, but that would be good, yeah. I, I think seven, you know, we should. Mr. Barnett will have a better handle on that than I would, but uh. I, I just I caution again about the job description for social workers. At the hearings, uh, the term mental health professional kept rolling back on us. And when I got the job description, we uh, mental health was never mentioned in the job description. So we got to be specific about what we want these social workers to do. And careful. And uh, so, and they certainly need to be supervised by. The administrators. So that's my concern with that. Um, well, this D tonight will make seven, will it not? Yes, okay. Everybody who who was laid off, who has wanted a position, has been hired back. And I uh, think that's what we wanted. To yeah, do. there are some that uh, you know a couple of them have chosen to go other you know, elsewhere, but uh, so they they've been able to do that. The, the, a little bit of difference in these two, these last two here, the Stronger Connections Grant, is they will be, their duties will be uh, a little more supervisory of the ones that are there and looking, they're looking more geared directly at homeless, the homeless population, or the through McKinney Bento, the kids who are uh, are not raised by their parents. a parent or a grandparent, but they're living with an extended family. So they're the, they're the provide a little more services to them. Uh, my other comments would be around Ida B, which is a policy that uh, we have been working on for uh, and it's attendance instead of personnel. Uh, I, Mr. Barnett sent us a copy of that, I believe. Uh, in our, uh, I, I just want to recap some things to make sure that I understand it. Uh, 
And I say that whatever policy we pass here, we definitely need to let the personnel know uh, that this is there. Now, you correct me, Mr. Barnett, if I mess up on any of this. Okay. But this policy pertains to what is referred to classroom teachers by the state code, uh, in which the state gives $500 a year if they miss less than four days. That's correct. Uh, so what we're doing is addressing those same people that the state's addressed for progression. Is that correct? That's correct. Except we're taking it one step further. We're giving $500 first semester professional personnel. Uh, that means that description of the state. Uh, if they five. miss less than two days, two days. two days or less. And second semester, they're eligible for $500 for two days or less. Which brings them to less than four days, which means they would get the Five hundred from the state, so they have fifteen hundred dollars total possible for professional classroom personnel. We're adding to that same policy all service personnel. All service personnel will have the same opportunity. Five hundred for the first semester for the first hundred days, I guess. 500 for the second 100 days if they miss two or less days during each of those periods, an additional 500 at the end of the year. Uh, so that they service personnel has an opportunity for $1,500. Is that it? That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's, yeah. We got, we went ahead and went in and matched what the state was doing for professional personnel for service personnel. So they had the opportunity to earn an additional $1,500 too. Yeah, well, this is all service personnel, central office, uh, everywhere. Yeah, we need okay. to really impress on the administrator in each school to make this in person. So, few days really, really explain to the, to the personnel to make it work. And I, I want to recap the purpose of this is that the board was concerned about the number of absenteeisms and concerned about the interruptions of classroom instruction that was occurring with absences of employees. Those are our two goals, to reduce the absences of employees as it affects kids and reduce the number, the amount of money that we're paying out, quite frankly, for absences. So uh, if that's it, policy in a nutshell, then uh, you all came along with that as well. I think we need to approve this one. So, any other discussion on these? I might say one other thing. Uh, I have some reservations about whether or not this is truly an incentive. I'd like to have a whole lot more, but we just don't have a good enough handle on our figures to do this because the way different things are categorized, we aren't clear about the money. So if this comes out and it's successful, uh, who knows what next year will hold. This is a year by year policy. So we call it good. Okay. Or service professional aid profession. And that's why I presented this tonight as the as a uh, administrative guideline and not a policy per se. Because it is a pilot program that can they can go year to year, and if you adopt the policy, then it's a lot more stringent to try to go back and revise. So it's it, it really an administrative guideline. Okay, that's fine with me. All right. No other discussion. I'll ask for a motion and a second. Someone Wilson makes the motion. I'll second. Byrne seconds. All those in favor of approving administrative items, say aye. 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 Be opposed. None. Passes unanimously. Item five financial. Uh, any discussion? If not, I'll ask to the motion. As presented. I'm sorry. Make a motion that we accept when that's presented. The story. Second. Snyder. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. It's unanimous. 
Number A on item six to approve the uh, personnel schedule your blue sheet as it's presented. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Burns makes the motion. Second? Second. Snyder seconds. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. It's unanimous. Uh, We'll be going into executive session. Look forward to do that uh, under item eight comments and concerns. I'll just repeat once again that the board self assessment is due August 15th. Uh, Mr. Jim Brown from School Board Association has sent each of us uh, that form. You just need to get on the computer on your email and fill that out. That needs to be completed by August 15th, an hour as possible. And the other item that we said last week we we're going to have on the agenda, uh, Duval Midway. And I'm going to ask Mr. Barnett to kind of fill us up uh, where we're at on Midway. Okay. Duval. Uh, Austin, myself, um, Greg Martin, and Mr. Kameens met Thursday. Uh, this past week in here. Um, right now, we are. We should have, uh, according to Mr. Martin, we should have another guy that's coming to us by the end of this week. Uh, we, he was able to move one. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying that I asked Austin. I asked about the uh, current, the existing building, if any part of the structure, and the entire structure is being condemned. So we we can't. And who who say it is condemned? I guess the. Uh, that was the insurance, insurance agencies. Yeah. You know, when, when I heard that, my question was if it was condemned, why did we allow a tour of that place to go on this spring? We got that okay through the proper channels, too. I can't really answer it, but the walkthrough. The walkthrough was. Of course, you did. I, I mean, if it was totally condensed like that. Can we still let somebody go? I'm, I'm sorry. Dude. That's okay. No, but moving forward, uh, they were able to move since moving the building down and stacking the one wing. It was able to uh, eliminate several uh, helical uh, towers that had to go several, several, several feet into it they hit, till they hit bedrock, concrete on top of that. So by eliminating the lion's share of those, that that will come in at a huge cost savings there. So that uh, coupled with, uh, we've talked about bidding out some of the packages, like bidding out the demo package and the haul off package for the old site. Because anytime you're, uh, anytime you put all those things into the general contractor package, you're adding 15% at least. So we're talking about uh, taking that package out. We're talking about taking the furnishing package out, bid those out separately. So that'll that'll be a cost savings there. So once they get this plan through this week, then we uh, we set up an appointment, go back to the SBA. Hopefully, first second week of August, go back to the SBA, say and tell them, here's what all we've done. We've done we've done cost savings here. We've adjusted here. We've moved the site. The site prep's going to be less. We're taking these two packages out. What can we do? At that point, if we get the thumbs up, then we go back to the engineering and electrical. They put in all the final specs. We go back a last time to uh, go ahead and, and try to move forward with the project. So oh, the way you're talking about all that excavation or building that area up nine feet and all of that. No, no, we don't have to do that anymore. They're trying to slide it toward the old farmhouse. It's still going to be elevated somewhat, but yeah, not, not nearly like yeah, what it was. Yeah. Have some built in there. Yeah. yeah, not like not like the school. Okay. The way you describe it, instead of three fourths of the building being on fill, it'll be just going to pour it. All right, so I'd certainly like to see so the demolition better. take place as soon as possible. Yeah, and clean that up. Give me a feeling that something's going on. Um, that's why I asked Seth about the the, the uh, brush hog this evening, and uh, we got a quote. Uh, Jerry Kameens got a quote today. We're going to rent a mini excavator to get it up there to get a lot of that cleaned up before we can. You know, so at least it won't be an eyesore until we can get that. It is definitely an eyesore. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Barnett. Does anybody have any other questions? Yeah, I do. I'd just like to 
you and Mr. Barnett on uh, being in the community, and that's much appreciated. Uh, the other night, uh, we were invited, friends invited us to Hearts, and uh, we went down to uh, cut weeds and uh, wash buildings, and I hopped out of my truck, and there was Mr. Barnett's weed eater, so I was really proud to say we have somebody in the a superintendent knows how to run a weed eater and what made you feel like and so I mean that isn't the job description. Yeah, the all their duties as a sign. But uh, today I saw where he was in the community giving out meals and stuff. That's just much appreciated. It's not just the community. The whole county. Yes. Oh, someone who so I, I, yes, it is. Yeah, leap from the front. Absolutely. I think there's a general feeling going on with many people in this county that something's moving, something's yeah. happening. I think that fuel has a lot to do with that. It certainly also has just key person. Absolutely. Yeah. That yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Barnett coming in, get his uh, uh, fingers in the pie everywhere and, and showing people that. Say aye. aye. Any opposed? And we're going into executive session. 